Hi everyone. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I don't know where you are. Don't know. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Thomas uh, from Pixelogic and uh, today I will continue my stream the same. Uh, um, I mean, I will f I will continue what I started the last week uh, about this uh, this um, Kylo Ren lightsaber. Sorry. I just need to uh, uh, to be used about speaking in English. <laughs> I didn't speak a lot English a lot with English uh, these last days. Um, yeah, uh, the last week uh, um, I started uh, this lightsaber from uh, from scratch. Um, the idea is to build the accessories which are uh, 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 which would be um, in association with my uh, helmet of Kaloran I did in uh, I did in the past, um, and then of course I wanted to have a lightsaber. Um, then last week was mainly uh, then building the shapes using the Z modeler and uh, live boolean and some RMS. You see, this is quite basic at this stage, but. I was happy because I was able to finish all the main shapes. Of course, now I need to add all the details and uh, um, more at the end of this session today, um, refining the shape and making something which looks less uh, um, CG. Uh, it's too perfect right now. And um, in between, um, um, between this last session and this session, I 3D printed this model. Um, the idea was not to build a final model because it's not final, but just to see uh, how it was in my hand. Um, the size of this lightsaber is 30, 30 centimeters by 15 centimeters. And I was not very sure uh, because it, in my head it was quite big. And then I, I did the 3D print. And let me show you some, uh, um, just a video. You see right now, uh, it's quite big. I don't know if you have the audio or not. Uh, this is a, a 3D printer, the Ultimaker uh, 2 Plus Extended, which is printing um, the model. And um, I did that in FDM, the final uh, um, lightsaber and also the future test print won't be done with this printer. But I just wanted to have something in my head and not focusing a lot on the quality and stuff like that. Um, then I prepare my uh, my print with Simplified 3D. I just did quick separation of my model to avoid printing something just one uh, uh, one shape. I'm able to print 30 centimeters in my printer, which is just uh, behind me. Uh, but you don't have a lot of control and because of the shape, uh, I um, a lot of support uh, would have been needed for something really big. Um, then there is nothing exceptional. Uh, FDM printing is good for that, but you can see that already right now. You'll see that later, but you see the layers and I printed that in layers of 200 microns. Um, I can go, of course, uh, uh, way higher in resolution, but I wanted something which was quite fast. And it took something like 15 hours already to print this uh, lightsaber, which is quite long. Um, and as you may have noticed, um, this uh, stream, uh, like before and like all my stream, I really focused on 3D printing. But I'm a way, uh, um, how can I say that? Um, I prefer by far the SLA printing, which is not FDM like that, but resin based. And I will speak about that just after. And you see a lot of su uh, support. This stuff here is support uh, to build some other parts. You will see just after with the photos. And because of this shape, a lot of support are needed. And some areas, you see this is quite ugly on this location. It's because the support just started almost on the empty space uh, of um, the, just uh, the, um, without uh, support on the floor. You see that quality is not that bad, but support here, support here, support almost everywhere. Let me just close that. And now we'll switch to images. I, text, I took some photos. Okay. And Something which is very important for 3D printing with FDM printers, I really insist about FDM, is the first layer. You need to attach to your, your printer, um, you need to have very uh, accurate, uh, 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 your bed needs to be very accurately leveled uh, or you will have issues. You need to have a rough most of the time, you need to be sure it will stick to the glass and I'm using a glue stick, uh, which is working pretty fine. Um, then, 
this is what you saw on the video and this is the lightsaber print done and like i said before a lot of support this is just a big mass of support and it's using a lot of material um, more than 30 percent of the total material is for supports and why did i split because i wanted to avoid support like that and and below and then this is the the, the parts uh, out of the printer then you see this is quite big you have this is centimeters here then just for the scale and I started to remove this support. You see this one inside because this is, um, let me switch back to the brush. When you are 3D printing this shape, when you are going from bottom to the top, you need, to, you see these shape are just growing without any connection with uh, uh, the bottom of your um, your platform. The problem is if you don't have support, it will just fall. This is what you saw uh, on support uh, on the side before. Then you need to have support inside. Uh, of course, the trick will be to split this model even more and to put vertically this uh, vent for uh, the, the plasma. Annoying. And then the same for the bottom. And you see the quality right now. It's not that nice because um, it's uh, uh, this is quite big. Uh, it's not that visible on the final print. And you see this uh, all this support we started. And then you need to remove after this support. And trust me, even if I'm using Simplify 3D, which is a good software for support, it's just a pain to remove. Uh, you have a lot of support it, and it's very difficult to remove support inside uh, for this bottom part of the uh, lightsaber, which is here, just below. I need to have support, you see, because it will grow from the bottom to the top and you need to have support just to be able to support the bottom part of this lightsaber here. Uh, and Trust me, it has been very long, difficult, and painful. And even when you are removing the support, it was done on the raft, and it's far to be cleaned, and you need to send a lot and stuff like that. And when I say it was painful, of course, I've been able to scratch myself. I was able just to, to break a nail and below, and uh, it's a small thing, but <laughs> painful. And then a lot, lot of support. And at the end, of course, I've been able to have my uh, draft of the lightsaber, but just look at this photo. You see just below here, where you, you had the raft, it's far to be clean. And just below, where you had also support, it's far to be clean. Then I'm happy to have my, you see with my hand, right now it's out of my hand, and I have big hands. Uh, compared to the lightsaber, this is very very big and uh, let me switch now to the other view and this is now the lightsaber you see uh, just uh, built which is exactly the same model as you have on the screen in uh, in the background um, and yeah it's feel big i can put without any problem three hands <laughs> one two and three if i want to hold everything and my first concern and that's why i'm doing this test print uh, each time i'm doing some production because yeah it's way too big then i ask again on uh facebook groups about star wars and cosplay and everybody told me no oh, no this is 30 centimeters it's massive and people who purchased uh, expensive lightsaber confirm it's expensive except one which is the uh, hasbro fx model which is 28 centimeters this is the only one all the other lightsabers are 30 centimeters. Then I think I will stick to 30 centimeters. Okay, and just to finish about the, um, the 3D printing, uh, like you know, for people who already know me and, and who are following my stream, I'm using a lot uh, the Form 2 as a printer, which is an SLA printer. And this live stream is sponsored by Formlabs. Um, we, of course, we, we are working very closely with them. We have this bridge between ZBrush through 3D Print Hub to uh, Preform Software to manage the printer. And it would make sense to, of course, uh, print everything with the Form 2 then. Um, I'm very happy to have this uh, this partnership, this sponsoring with them, uh, because now anyway uh, it was uh, in the plans for me, but everything else now will be about 3D printing with the form too. Even some tests, I will do quality tests, and I will do just print of small parts just to see the quality. I know the shape, I know the scale. Now it will be more okay. I need to test the blade because remember, sorry, I'm talking a lot right now, and I will start to skirt very soon. Um, 
I will it with deep the blade as well. And uh, the blade, I don't want to have a straight line, straight tube, like you see in all the, the blades uh, that you can buy. Um, not the blade, but the lightsaber you can buy in stores. Uh, I want to have this fury effect uh, with the plasma of the blade. And I will sculpt that and I will print that with the white resin from Form Labs, which is translucent slightly. You can have, a, have trans, not transparency, but translucent. Then I hope that the, uh, the LED inside in red, bright, uh, bright red, uh, will give this effect and I hope it will be okay. Then I will need to test that and see if I need to have a good result, if I need to have two millimeters, three millimeters of thickness for the print and stuff like that. Um, also, I will need to consider, like I said the last time, the electronics because I want to have the LED driver inside. I want, if possible, to have the sound when you are swinging, etc, uh, etc. Et then you are... Um, a lot, uh, a lot of um, uh, things that I need to consider and of course to test. Uh, Mother Kainer, if you have some images to share because for everything it depends really the way it's holding because most of the time when you are holding the lightsaber, you are holding the lightsaber on this location not just at the limit of the, the plasma, uh, I don't know the name here, and just below then uh, it should be more like that and like that then it's it's more that way then you have two hands of course if you are just going to the top it's like that but it should be more like this and then it's more two hands and don't forget that he has gloves on top which gives it a bit more thickness to his hands anyway i can at the end perhaps i will scale down to 28 centimeters and two centimeters reduce quite a lot in fact the, the model then Anyway, uh, feel free if you have some questions uh, in the chat, I will do my best to answer them uh, about the brush. Of course, I'm trying to stay on focus uh, with this subject. Um, I hope to uh, start for one hour and a half, mainly adding all the main parts which are missing. And after we'll focus on all the details, not really slicing the model uh, because I still need to have information about um, the electronic I will put inside. I order some stuff. I order the LED strips, some electronics, but I need to wait <laughs> for the delivery. Um, Sorry, I did not have the time to drink my hot chocolate, my usual hot chocolate. Uh, okay, then uh, since the last week, I did nothing on this 3D model except if I'm just looking at my subtool list inside of the brush, uh, I have uh, four start groups because for this 3D print, I had to split my model in multiple parts. Then these three, in fact, four parts, I did all of these groups. Uh, just to organize things. Nothing else uh, except again one expects here this corner. Let me switch to this model. It was more straight. I just slightly rounded it. It's not that rounded in the, the design from what I saw, but I thought it was better like that. This is kind of deviation of the design. Um, okay, then um, I will let me bring back, uh, oops, sorry, pure ref which is my reference software. I have my usual references. And um, what I will do, I will work on this uh, um, front part where you have potentially the switch to switch on the lightsaber. Um, then I will do all this kind of stuff, the background. Uh, after I will switch to the bottom to, the, to do this part inside. And then uh, after I will switch to the back. Uh, oops, sorry, where are you? So I'm just mixing things with my hotkeys, then doing all this part as well. Um, I think this is a, a kind of trigger switch, I don't know exactly, then this opening design inside, um, and that the cable, and after, if everything is fine, starting to refine the shapes and, and, and all these kind of things. Uh, you see this shape, etc., etc. Then let's go back to that one. And, oops, sorry, I had the city, my face on top <laughs> of everything. And uh, then you may have missed, this is what I modify this, this, this part here, sorry. Um, the problem, my control is very far from my eyes and I, I'm missing stuff about what is on screen. Okay, um, let's start. Okay, for this shape, uh, there is nothing very complex 
complex. The only thing that I may not do right now is the switch by itself because I need to receive my switch to see the size and then working on that. Okay, there is this kind of screws here as well. Okay, then uh, let's go. Let me switch to this part. This is this one. Okay. And I will append whatever a poly mesh really, which is just a 3D object, and I will convert to like usual if you are used about my way of working to this quick cube. And I will display the poly frame and I will just remove the live boolean. You remember this live boolean? This is a way to see in real time this boolean operation inside of the brush. I don't need that right now, that's why all these models which are subtractive are visible right now but performances are better that way. Uh, okay, then let me just try to find a good size for my shape. Let me remove my perspective. Okay, like this. And this is where I think I have perhaps a... shouldn't be... okay, but uh, you see the size for the proportions, the distance, it should be like that and should be not that far. I think, you see these edges like that are too close to each other. Let me solo that. So the problem is to move everything will be painful. And with a symmetry should be better as well. Okay, just trying to see if I just Okay, move everything. And you see I'm doing that visually. It's not perfect, but who will notice that? I don't think a lot of people. I know that, but not that much. You see as well, I notice that it's not that rounded here. Then I'm fixing my model while I made. I am it. I am at it. Sorry. Always, when you see a kind of mistake thing like that, try to fix it as soon as possible. Don't wait for later to do it. Okay. And now it should be better like this. Okay. Uh, and I guess it's slightly rounded. For this model, then I can move like this and and I think as well this one should be more higher. Okay. Then let's do this rounded part and or let's do this extrusion now to be done like this. Uh, I don't think this is that thick. Hello, the Bosch France. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, what I was doing, yeah. Uh, let's use my Zimola brush. Let me insert like this. With my symmetry on. I may do the split after. Oops. And that, you see, I'm just trying to, to, to do all of these main shapes. And now I will insert to do this just rounded part. Uh, do, 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 do. I think, yeah, I can just Oh, one thing is very important. You see the size of my brush is very important because based on this size, why? 
it doesn't extrude this one. Let me solo my model. Okay, like this. And I can move everything. Yes, what I wanted to say is when you are um, using um, the QMesh action with the brush, then this QMesh a poly, like that, the size of your brush will define how quick it will snap to the other part of the model. You see, I'm just barely moving my mouse and it's already snapping. If you have a large brush, you see it snapped just at the end, just on this uh, um, uh, edge on the side. And that's why this, this is very important to know what you are doing with your brush uh, each time you're doing this kind of operation. You'll see, as well, I'm inserting an edge right now. And you see that the brush is trying to do a kind of um, uh, um, proportionality between uh, along the edge, but if you press the shift key, it will take the shape of the closest edge that you pick. Like that, I can define a small distance. And like that, let me insert an edge. Like that, and now I can extrude this one. Oh, no. Toma, you are doing something wrong. And I need to slide that one. And I want to slide edge loop complete. Perhaps it will be too much. Let's see. Let's press my D key. Like that I'm saying with a smoothing. Of course, this is way too strong, but at least I see my shape. Okay. Uh, oh, you have so many tricks inside of the brush. <laughs> and now let me just insert again an edge like that, and I can just slightly doing a very small extrude. And you see, because my brush size is very, very small, directly it snap just to the polygon below. I don't want to snap that much and I'm scaling my brush size and I should be able now to do my extrusion. I don't know why, come on, why it doesn't scale down. Uh, let me insert an edge like that. I will do it directly like this. Okay. And I think I have kind of rounded edge on this location. And what I can do, I can take my uh, slide. Where are you slide? Edge loop partial. It will stop here yeah, slightly, not in doing the other side. Let me select like this. And now I should be able to, no, okay, let's move. <laughs> Like that. And you see, I don't spend, in fact, too much time in all this kind of stuff because I will be able, like I said before, to sculpt them. And uh, don't spend too much time. Uh, my concern is really the proportions because as you can see, it's way too big. I need to move that down. Let me reset the rotation and inverting my selection because this one, you see this split like that is just on the continuity on this one. It should be then around there. Like that. Uh, no. This one, this one should be around. And let me move down this one. Let me scale.
scale. Let me just recenter. Oops. Okay. Okay, then now what I will do, I will try to just refine, uh, not refining, but smoothing everything to have this more, um, uh, more organic, uh, organic effect. I will just add this edge here. See, there's a lot of edges, but uh, I don't really care, to be honest. Uh, oops, sorry. Insert. And QMesh. Let me reduce my size because I want to snap quickly like that. Okay. Then about smoothing, I can do like I did before, uh, um, whatever the solution. Uh, oh, let me just rotate that a little bit. Sorry, I'm just thinking about something. I think it's more that way. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, like that. And sorry, I'm just trying to fix what I see is wrong. Okay, uh, then what I can do is I can apply my dynamic subdivision, but use, playing with the crease to have small crease edges. But when I will use my crease edges in geometry, in crease, my crease slider, I will put a very low value. Then meaning that if I'm using my crease action, where are you crease? Crease action. I should be able to have a, a, a creasing which appears only, um, not only, but uh, the crease will be visible only to the first level of uh, of smoothing. You see, I'm pressing my D key, and I see the crease like that. I think I will use my uh, perhaps not the edge loop. Come on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and what I said before, and if I go to one, you see it start to smooth. Mm, perhaps I need to switch to two, like I did before. But in my sub, uh, sub tool geometry, sorry, geometry, and for dynamic subdivision, let me switch to three. Okay, like this, and then I can start to crease my edges to have something which will uh, be uh, more uh, sharp. Like this, to have just the boundaries. This is a bit time consuming, to be honest. Uh, I could use um, the, um, how can I say that? Uh, the insert edges like I did before. Perhaps I will do it, I don't know. I'm trying to force myself to use the crease edges because I'm not a big user of the crease, which is a mistake because it can be very convenient. Okay, like this. And I don't want to spend too much time because this is just a switch support, not a big part of the model. Uh, for this one, let me crease. Ah, no. Um, ah, I don't know what it will do. Um, polygroup border. Ah, it does everything. This is what I was concerned. Uh, 
And the bottom part is not that visible, but I, I prefer doing it. Um, okay. You need to be very careful about not forgetting some edges because it can be very quick before something wrong happen. And what I would like to avoid is, um, you see, I want to have this rounded part, but I need to have this edge below. And I think that my, um, you see this kind of, uh, of, um, uh, in set I did and with the thickness is a little bit too uh, too much and I think this one need to be removed Q mesh yeah it's I don't like that, but at the end it will be something like this side. And do I need to spend so much time on that? I don't think so. So the problem is, you see, is uh, all this kind of small bevel here because of this opening. And you know what? I will sculpt it. Um, I will Q mesh this one. Why spending so much time on that? It's not really needed. Because I will spend more time by trying to find the good uh, um, part that I need to, to clean than just doing few brush strokes. I don't know if you remember or um, for those of you who, who hasn't been here, um, I haven't been here, sorry, at the last stream, at the end I was just showing that uh, sometimes just one brush stroke is faster than trying to, uh, to deal with all these kind of small details. Okay. We got the wireframe. Yeah, just need to fix that. Okay. Ah, no, not okay. Uh, oh, yes. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Donc, um, donc, sorry, I was saying some French. Uh, for the small holes uh, here and here, I don't know if this is an opening or not, but I will just do some boolean operation very quickly. Uh, then this object, uh, uh, which is here, let me uh, append some cylinder, which is way too big. But for what I will do, it will be okay. 90 degrees, I'm pressing the shift key, of course, to keep, to have this constraint for the angle. And that way, this one, let me duplicate this one, which is, I guess, the same time. It seems to be smaller slightly, but let's do it the same size. And as a negative mesh, and if I put my live boolean without the wireframe, this is what I have right now, then it should be okay. Okay, then this mesh is for me done. And to explain like as what I said before is, um, just sorry, just one thing. Uh, when I will print that, I will print that as a single mesh, meaning that right now you see this is two separate objects, but I will merge everything and after I will do this kind of 
uh, separation uh, using a brush just to, to put a mark all around uh, of this model. Uh, it will be, I think, way better like that. Um, okay. And when I say about sculpting and things like that, let me just duplicate, duplicate this model just to show you as an example. I will solo it and forget about the small holes which are missing. And uh, that geometry, I will be able to convert my dynamic division to a real division and dividing multiple times and then using my brush this time and uh, using why not my move brush. You see, just trying to, uh, oops, trying to move slightly like that, making that more rounded. this and for the small uh, uh, part which are missing here you can take like down soda brush and starting just to sculpt of course it's not very nice like that oops sorry did too much but I really don't care again because uh, so I'm doing that very quickly perhaps I should do that in another way um, let me perhaps use the up cracks brush. You see this way, using another brush like Trim Dynamic, like this, like that. And you see, you can do all this kind of bevel stuff. Same for this one, just trying to make that a little bit more natural and not, like I said before, not so much CG. Okay, you see what I mean? Nothing very complex, but you see it's faster to do like that. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Uh, as a difference between QMesh and Extrude. Let me just show you that in a, a small example. Let me make a PolyMesh 3D uh, and convert to um, initialize a quick cube. Let's say 4x4x4. And let me display the polyframe. Uh, in the Z model, you have two different actions. You have QMesh. Right now, this is set to a single polygon. And you have extrude. And if I click this QMesh, a single poly, I'm doing an extrusion, this is what I have. And if now I go back to uh, this set of action and I'm choosing the extrude, and uh, I'm doing the same thing. There is no difference. The only difference is when I'm doing an extrusion like this, you see, just on the side of an existing extrusion, Nothing happened, just doing an extrusion of this single polygon. Of course, I can do multiple selection. While if I'm using the QMesh action, uh, sorry, on the polygon, QMesh single polygon, then it's trying to snap to uh, the surfaces which are just uh, uh, adjacent. Meaning that if I'm doing an extrusion like that, it's just an extrusion, but if it's fine, you have an extrusion like this and there is some polygons on the side, it's trying to connect and doing a connection, you see, like that. And also you can go inside and removing your polygons and building. And this is a great way to do some uh, sometimes complex shape, okay, like this, and I want to bridge 
this one and this one, then you can extrude and it will snap automatically or be removed. This is the ID behind QMesh, but you also have some extra action. Like if I extrude this one and I'm pressing the shift key, now to switch to just not extruding, but you see I'm extruding and I'm pressing the shift key while doing this extrusion. It will now move the polygon and not extruding the polygon. And another one is I'm starting to move, but I won't press the shift, but the control keys and then it will just extrude, but without the connected polygons. And then now I can start start another extrusion like this. I can do that and do that and do that. And then I can connect. Or if I want, oh, I want to remove that one. You push and pull and it will be removed that way. I think I have a small gap in between. It was a mistake. And also you see that one is doing the extrusion you have a kind of bevel effect in between. And this is the way that it's working. And except when I need to extrude something which is just uh, 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 connected between an edge in between, uh, and I don't want to have this connection, I'm using at 99% of the time the QMesh action, almost never the extrude. Okay, uh, let me go back to that. Um, okay, that this one was just to show you uh, by just sculpting, I need to do that in a better way, but just by sculpting is far enough. Okay, let me delete it because I will do that later with uh, the Boolean operations. Remove the solo mode. Okay, like this. Then this model, this part for me is done, only the missing uh, item. Uh, I will do the screw. And for the screw, I will start with a polysphere 3D. I will do that separately. Uh, polysphere 3D. And uh, I don't know which type of screw it is. Um, then I can do kind of Boolean operation, quick Boolean operation. Um, then let's use QMesh. Uh, let me duplicate this subtool. Control Shift D, the hotkey, initialize, and I will do um, a one by one QMesh. Quick cube, sorry. Which is inside. Let me move it outside. And uh, I don't know what is the shape, but I don't care. Um, then I will pick my extrude like this. And if I pr clicking again, it will reduce the same action. Like that I can move like this. And what I want to do still with QMesh, I don't want to extrude that one. I want to press shift key and like that it will move like that my model. Uh, I can go in, sub, not subtool, sorry, geometry, uh, dynamic subdivision, but I don't want to use a smooth one, but the quick grid one, like that with a small value. And like this, I can do a kind of quick bevel. Like that. Uh, perhaps I need a bit more. Let me flatten my sphere a little bit. Subtool. This one I want to be negative. And you see like that I'm able to see my screw. And uh, I want to be just slice on this area. Let's do everything with Boolean. Um, I will duplicate like before this one and I will convert to a quick cube. I love quick cubes. <laughs> Which is here. With a dynamic subdivision, I will scale it. Let me recenter. I said recenter, and I will be able to slice my model. This cube will be negative, like that. Sub tool, I say this is negative mesh, and I'm able to see the result. This is why I did that now because I was pretty sure this negative shape will go through my model. It's nothing I don't want to have that. Then I need to perhaps edit my model. Not rotation, scaling. Like this, let me go back to positive to see my model. Uh, 
and what I can do is moving down this one but what I want to do is for this sphere not rotating scaling the flat part to be a bit bigger Come on, I don't want the start group on to be negative. Like that. Okay. Then I've been able to build this head screw uh, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I don't say this is perfect and my idea, and I want to do something which is more rounded. Um, then I can insert as well a cylinder on top. Of course, I'm doing a lot of details on this head screw, which is useless because for the size, it never, even if the printer is accurate, and it would be partially visible, I think, because of the size, but it's not really useful, but this is a way for you to show the benefit of Boolean operation uh, with a, a ZBrush. And this one will be negative as well. But I want to go inside, but this one being done after, and I move it down. can scale down okay let's do a shape like that which is kind of stupid but <laughs> I don't care <laughs> uh, I just want to increase the quality of that I'm not a big designer of uh, Head screw like this because it should be inside of the hole, I think. In fact, this was not the shape. Well, I don't care. Let's do something like that. Uh, let me just do another thing because I need to consider the problem with supports later. Okay, let's say it's okay like that. Um, mm, 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 mm. Done. Okay, like this. And I can say to the brush now, okay, make this Boolean mesh. Then it generated for me this union mesh here. Okay, then you see this is quite a lot of polygons. And what I will do now is I will convert that to DynaMesh pretty quickly. Of course, I need to take care of the resolution right now. 128 is not enough. Let's say 200. Okay. And uh, I will activate my radial symmetry on which axis? This one with my Trim Dynamic Brush. just to do kind of quick bevel. Oh, Thomas, this is a radial symmetry. <laughs> and to be honest, uh, don't forget that a lot of things in your 3D will be visible uh, through the small details that you will do then don't underestimate how important are your small details uh, on your on your model okay uh, this is fine now let me just copy this model let's rename that screw head i will look at the chat in a few seconds i'm sorry i don't have the don't really look at it let me just put this screw Uh, screw, 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 past, 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 past. I 
I just need to be sure that everything is connected. Okay, I will be able to duplicate and I think I have one on the other side as well. Where is the other side? No, there is not. Then I will um, duplicate, Control Shift D. I said Control Shift D. Control Shift D. Okay. Let me do a 90 degrees angle rotation. I thought it was. Mm, yep. Let me rotate that slightly because it's more on the side here. And I want the same on the other side. Uh, let me just move it slightly. It's too much, too close on the border because I will scale this border later and I don't want to have a kind of overlap in between. Okay. Then the other side, let's do a mirror and weld. I'm afraid it will be quite big. Because let me just look. That's why this is a big benefit to have just a draft with me. Uh, yeah, I think details will be visible with that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, like I said before, mirror and weld, geometry, modify, topology, mirror and weld to have the other side. And now it's done. Okay, and let me save that. Okay, let me look at the chat. What do you mean, uh, Riyama, for the screw, you mean? Uh, it should be higher, it's too low, by the way. Yes, today we have four streams. Gary, I don't know what happened to the streams yesterday. I know we had to move some stuff for the streamers. Stuff happened, you know, during the weekend. Um, I don't really know exactly. I know that Kyle told me that, Thomas, please take care about not being too long your stream today. Don't do more than four hours. <laughs> it will be a problem. Um, now the side on... Ah, uh, yes, perhaps slightly. This one slide is lower. It's difficult to know, you know, because of the perspective. Perhaps slightly. I don't think it's a big deal, to be honest. Like I said, I'm trying to be a little bit accurate. I think I will redo my screw later to have something which is more uh, 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 hexagonal uh, shape for the head. Uh, you see, this is quite too large. I, I will redo that, but offline. Okay, you see the process anyway. Um, you see, like this kind of opening here and stuff like that. I will do that later. Okay, now I will just focus on this shape here, which is going inside. Uh, you see I need to build this part which is missing then everything oh one thing as well the tube which is just at the uh, just the, uh, uh, the boundary I don't know to say that where the plasma is going out sorry for my lack of vocabulary um, for some photo I saw you see it's slightly bevel there is a little bit of angle it's not just a straight tube um, and to do that let me just redo that uh, what I will use sub two. Let me. Do I have multi subdivision levels or not? I don't remember. Uh, no, I don't have that. Okay. Uh, what I will do. I will then just uh, um, use the ZBrush modifiers. Then with the gizmo. And that uh, I will select my uh, boop, 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 deformer. And the deformer is an, is an FFD deformer, but it's only working globally on the model, not on the selection. Meaning if I do a mask before, it won't take in consideration the mask. Then I need to work with that. Um, the thing is, I will just need to increase the number of 
vertices of my control box vertically. And now what I will do is I will just select the top part and doing a scale on this vertices like that. Not that much, it's a little bit. Okay, save. And now it's done. Okay, then I can say to the brush. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Okay, I accept. And now I've been able just to bend slightly my model. That's why this deformer, this is not something you are using on a daily basis, but it's very useful. In fact, I it's tricky a little bit because I bended everything, including the inside part, which is not what was needed. And the same that you see the thickness is uh, uh, way larger, but for now we'll stay like this because I need to consider um, how I will manage that uh, for the blade. Because this one, I don't think you can attach a blade, but I should be able to have a version with the blade and without the blade, and put, probably being able to remove the blade and replace the inside part like a, like a cap uh, uh, to, um, to have something nicer. Then this is a lot of things I need to think, and I will think that more offline to be honest. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, modern cleaner. This is more like uh, uh, an Allen screw. I mean, hexagonal head. Um, anyway, screw is yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, then this part. This is going way inside, and you see, this is this internal part with the connection. You don't see that uh, in in the light saber, but when I build and I printed my model, I've been careful to. Uh, have this part separate to this one just to connect everything inside and of course to leave enough room to build this kind of part. Again, you see that this part here is connected, it's kind of welded together. Of course, I will do a separate part and at the end I will merge everything and with probably with Dynamesh I will re-sculpt locally uh, some of the parts. Uh... Your crush, what did I miss? Yeah. Okay. Um you see we see the screw. Uh, it's not I know I think it really depends on the model. It's not even Halen. I don't know what it is, it's uh weird stuff. I, I think it really depends on the model and the design and there is something here, I don't know what it is exactly. Okay, you see that this one and this one, you see there is some differences. The shape globally is here, but uh, not exactly the same. Anyway, um, I'll do the same as before, nothing new on that one, uh, except that I will work with this subtool here. Then this is another start group. I'm trying to keep my groups together, then uh, I will duplicate that one, remove my smoothing. And like before, I will do my initialize and my quick cube, which is inside, probably. Oh, mm -hmm. oh there. <laughs> OK, so I was just looking if it was just a good one. Okay, uh, sorry for the poor um, um, sound effect, it was not the goal. <laughs> and I think this one is, you see, is ah, rounded slightly as well, then I need to run that. this okay uh, this one is very thin and then this one is very thick um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. okay sorry if my uh, my okay and stuff like that I'm trying to think at the same time oh one thing you see that right now there is some strip strip lines uh, on top of my model because I'm in live boolean mode that this is a way that the polyframe is visible in live boolean and this is uh, um, this is okay 
Oh, uh, then, uh, not what I wanted to do. Let me insert my edges and I want to split. Just try to prepare the areas and this one, I'm trying to do this cut here, which is aligned with the tubes. Like that. Like this, I will be able to just doing my uh, deformation, this kind of inset, which is slightly on top of this border here. Uh, and then I will be able to extrude this shape on the side. Let me solo my model. Yes, I can give it a bit more thickness, not that much. Like this. Oh, I think I did something wrong. Uh, no, it's a line. Okay. No, I didn't. I thought I, I was using another one. And because this is a straight extrusion, you see it's going up. Let's move that down. Oh, oops. And what I didn't do before, and because this is rounded, uh, let me insert a bevel. Oops. Bevel. And trying to see where will be this opening. Like that. Uh, when I want to extrude something, see to remove something, I'm trying to go on the other side like that, and then I can remove that way. Let me put back the symmetry because each time I'm not using the symmetry and it's kind of annoying. Can rotate and with my symmetry on, but not radial through X. Sorry. Giving my angle. And then I need to do this kind of big extrusion. The problem you see right now is when you your extrusion is going just on the normal of the model, which is not really what I need, but no choice. And I will need like before to select these edges and moving them. Of course, I could try to slide them. No, Thomas, I want to move. You see, like this. And I have this uh, kind of part on top. Let me switch back to my model. Uh, okay. I'm trying to read the comment, but this is totally off topic. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, Uh, this line, this line, this one. I don't have this line right now, but it's below. In fact, this is close to what I have right now. Um, a bit less, probably. Let me insert. Okay, then just to avoid having this edge going on the side, and I can use the slide uh, single edge action. And like this, I can slide my model slightly like that. And I want to do this, uh, this shape. And for this one, for the rounded part, I will do Boolean stuff. I won't care. Uh, I will just do Boolean. I don't know what is inside because this is not visible. Then I don't know how far it will go, but I, I will leave like that. You see, I have so much my old, uh, uh, my old habits of 
trying to model everything that sometimes you're doing a boolean with a cylinder and it's done, uh, it, it's way easier and faster. And uh, we need to be very careful of that, my way of working, um, which is not that good sometime, sometimes. Uh, inserts, and I have this one here. And for that one, let me just slide. Um, why I can't Q mesh? What is wrong? I don't know. Anyway, um, this is not that big. Okay, like this. I can slide like I did before. And for the small one here, what I'll do, and you see there is a kind of small depth in between. Small depth, sorry. Oh, uh, kind of, um, it's a uh, kind of small extrusion in between. Uh, let me insert an edge like that. Um, but this one is smaller. Then I can do something different. I can slide like I did before, slide my two edges is to be you see wider like that and I can insert again like that and I'm able to have my cube and yeah I did something wrong at this stage let me just undo not sliding, but reinserting my edges like that. Okay. Um, okay, like this, like this, and I want to have a small extrusion in between, and I can do my inserts, and then now, uh, oops. Okay, extrude. Then this shape by itself is done. I will uh, do this kind of brain operation uh, for this opening. Then I will simply open a cylinder, which which is way too big. I did. Oh, sorry, I need to move it up. This is this one, okay. That's the problem when you're doing insert or happen. When you're doing inserting, it will add insert just below. If you do happen, it will add that at the end of the list. And this is what I did. And as you can notice, all these small detail, this is what takes a lot of time in the process. But when I will be done with that, it will be faster for everything else. Mm. And you know what? Uh, yes, I will put a screw or something like that after. Uh, this is negative. Let me hide. can do something like this and the screw after on top and what I need to do as well is now applying my dynamic subdivision on that and not like before I will try something else not doing my edges or stuff like that or crease edges um, I will switch to the Q grid and see what it looks like And I think I will stick with that because as you can see, uh, on the edges like that, it's not perfect. It's not uh, really rounded. It needs to be uh, just sanded. And like I said before to sand, uh, I can you just use some brush strokes and nothing else. Uh, let me move that down. Uh, rotate.
Meaning, like before, if I want to flatten everything, let me just duplicate my model, just to show you. Like that, let me solo, where are you solo? Solo everything, and I will convert this dynamic subdivision to real subdivision, apply. Okay, and why not uh, dynamishing everything? Uh, I think it was 200 as a resolution, which was enough. Oh no, 200. Let me check something. No, it's a good size. Uh, dynamish, 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 dynamish. Why I can't... Okay, like this. And with my hedge polish brush. You see? Just a few brush strokes and it's fine. Same as before. And at this stage, no more uh, crease edges. That's for me the beauty of the brushes. Sometimes, yeah, you're focusing a lot of small details by trying to find a solution while you have in fact multiple solutions that you can use uh, at the same time. I can even use an alpha just to do the whole uh, if I want, but uh, you see that uh, it's working fine. Especially when it's at something like that as the size. Okay, um, let me delete that. Uh, for the screw, I will use the same as before, even if I want that one at the end. But uh, let me duplicate just to have uh, uh, something. Shit. This is a burn operation which is on top. I need to put that just below. Okay, and I will do this kind of two stuff on the side which are, I think, part of a cylinder connected uh, just below. Uh, it should be not very complex to do. Um, and let me duplicate these cylinders. How they look like? And I will reuse a part of these cylinders. Um, yeah. Duplicate. And I will scale them up to be in between this size and this one on top. Uh, let me think. Uh, scale, let me recenter, reorient, and pressing the Alt key, you see, on this axis to do a uniform scale along the axis. Like that. And what I want is only some edges. This one, this one, and you see this is slightly rotated. Um, and let me select with the symmetry. Or oh, let me just work on one side. And like that it will be easier. I don't need to have everything. Come on. And switch to transparency mode. Uh, I can even remove this edge, I think, because I just want to have this one and this one. Everything will be just welded together with this part. Um, I will do delete hidden, geometry, modify topology, like that. I won't be annoyed by what is inside. Let me remove the symmetry and I want to delete this edge. Oh, I have a bunch of heads, uh, of heads, oh, edges, sorry. Uh, 
cats and I need just few of them and I will delete them manually. Um, delete hidden, then I will use the delete action, a single poly, command save. One, two, three, just to see how far, it's just on top, I, I don't have, don't need a lot of edges. Okay, I think this is enough. And let me scale. Slightly like that. Let me bring back my model without the live boolean. This is just edges and I need to extrude them to give this depth uh, effect. Let me solo everything. And with, um, I can use something which will be easier, which will be the panel loop, because if I use the Z modeler on that, like this, Q mesh, I get a single polygon. If I go inside, you see what is happening. I'm going in, I mean, I'm trying to, to do an, a negative extrusion. And if I go on the other side, I, I will go outside of the extrusion. Then what I can do is going in my geometry, you have uh, edge loop and you have the panel loops, uh, which is diff, diff, uh, the goal is to build a panel based on um, uh, polygroups with uh, um, uh, slice around to do nice stuff. But if you use that without the bevel options, without the loops, you click on panel loops, you see it just does a constant extrusion. But I want to have a negative elevation and you see now this is inside. I can increase slightly the thickness like that. And you see I have my negative extrusion. And why not moving that a little bit more? I don't know how much it is, but I think I can rotate. I can rotate it as well. And why not scaling it? Oh, I just need to take care of that because it's not very nice. And I, I don't know. <laughs> and I have a better view somewhere. Not really. You see, this is not very visible. I think this is quite a straight line, in fact, not this angle I gave on my model. I think that was a little bit of a mistake. Okay, then I should have my, uh, see it's quite almost, it's on the edge, yep. Um, I, th uh, I think, I think, I don't know in fact. I'm trying to see. Yeah. I don't like that, this one. Perhaps I need to move slightly the, just the um, negative burn operation. And sub tool, this is not this one, then this one.
Okay, problem solved. <laughs> What I don't like is uh, should be on top of the tube. And it's way too much like this. I find that weird that there is so much angle. Because I don't like the fact that this one should be connected. I'm pretty sure that this one shouldn't touch. Anyway, let's keep that this way now, and I will simply just adding my edges. That I can do my mirror and weld to the same on the other side. Okay. Uh, tut 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 tut. I may add some details later. You see, there is some perhaps some stuff like this, but. Uh, like inside, I don't know what it is. You see, there is this kind of things. Then I don't know if there is some kind of connection between this part and this part. I have no idea. Um, okay, now I'll do the bottom part, like I said before. Like this stuff. It will be mainly random. This shape, I won't spend a lot of time. This is quite of uh, basic stuff. Um, just spending a little bit of time to build uh, mm, Let me think, because this is an hexagonal base, I won't be able to use the radial symmetry. Um, anyway, I'll do that separately. Um, okay, let me select my cylinder 3D, going in initialize and changing some settings because I want to have for the horizontal one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's type it, it will be easier. Okay, I don't want to have so much vertical divisions. And okay, make polymesh 3D, sub tool, copy, go back to my model here. And that one, where are you? Okay, the cap, then let me pass it in between. And you see this kind of model, this is what is very tricky when you are printing. You need to anticipate, okay, I need to print like that, it will be like this, and um, wouldn't be a problem about um, how I will, um, oh, sorry, let me go to 90 degrees. So I'm trying to align to the uh, openings. Okay, sorry, I was just turning around. Um, you need to consider always that how you will print that, how you will split your model uh, to do the assembly, to do the painting, because just, an, you see that I could print all this shape as one single model, but think about how I will paint inside. It will be very tricky. Then if I'm splitting that separately, in fact, I will try to build, you see this base with all of this uh, uh, stuff like that, like this as a single model and this one below this kind of tube will be a separate model like that i'll be able to just to insert another reason is i should be able to access inside of my model because the trick could be oh you have this kind of cap you see this cap here okay you can remove the cap and access to the battery no it's not possible because i have this stuff here 
in between and I won't be able to access everything. Then I really need to think about how I will access my model, where I will put my electronics. If I need to put a microphone, uh, not a microphone, sorry, a speaker, where I will put this speaker? Where, sorry, I will put this speaker? A lot of things that I need to consider. Then the more you split your model, the easier you will be to access some part, to paint some part. And OK, this is where I will do my opening. I can unscrew something and being able to assemble. And just something I never I never did in ZBrush is just doing a kind of uh, of um, uh, of real screw because I don't know to say that in English, but uh, I think most of the electronics and battery will be in this part of the lightsaber. And I want to access from this part. Then I guess I will slice it here and be able just to put a tube or perhaps being able to screw this tube. Then I need to do this helix uh, inside of the brush trying to, 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 to screw. And this is exactly where I will do some test with the form two, just to print a small part of the top tube and bottom tube and see if I can screw it and if it's fit and if it's not too loose because I don't want to uh, to, 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 to lose the bottom part of my lightsaber with all the electronics and this stuff because I'm swinging it or, or just because I'm manipulating that. Then these are all the stuff that I need to, to, to keep in mind because I don't want to glue if I want to replace my batteries or I will do. Then you see, I need to anticipate. Then perhaps I will do this part as a single one and just having a cut on this part here and trying to, to fit that and playing a little bit with the tolerance there just to, to, to fit that. I don't know yet, or perhaps I will do this bottom part as a single mesh with the, uh, the, the screw on top. And I will do this part, you see this is different color. I need to do that as a separate model anyway for the color. And I will do an opening which will be connected to this part below like that. I will be able to just remove um, this cap here connected to what is inside. That I will be able to paint separately and after gluing everything together. Perhaps I will do this way. Um, and um, to answer your question, Web Sum 7. Uh, this is uh, the Karen helmet uh, that I did. There is a making of on my website. And it's in English. <laughs> Sorry for my English, but uh, uh, and I explained all the process I did in the video, and at the end, you will see some photos like it was on top. Uh, come on, where are you, my photos? Okay, this is on my head. It was the first night before leaving. It was very few hours before taking the plane uh, on my head. And then at the ZBrush summit, uh, you see on my head with uh, the, 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 the scarf. Um, from Kylo Ren uh, on the stage at the ZBrush Summit. And, um, and I explained everything, especially the cost of the uh, helmet. And for the lightsaber, of course, I'm tracking everything in terms of cost. Uh, the cost of uh, the 3D print FDM, the resin, etc., etc. Because this is very important to consider uh, as well. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, German can also speak English and trust me, way better than French. <laughs> um, yeah, we try to open, and like I said, we really want to open ZBrush Live to a lot of people, but it takes time to find the good streamers. People who are used to stream, people who are used to speak in front of a camera and being able to sculpt and model at the same time. It's not that easy, you know. Um, anyway, uh, sorry, I'm talking, I'm talking, but I'm not sculpting. I'm not modeling in fact uh, then this model is at the good position which is inside and I will quickly insert an edge loop just at the boundary here and here just to have to know where are the limits of my model then now I can switch sorry in solo mode and I can model uh, everything that way um, what I will do, you see this boundary here on these edges? I will do that for all the panels. Uh, then let me bevel, um, sorry, bevel. And off. Uh, Sorry, activate symmetry and I will put my radial symmetry, but I need to be at six. OK, 
Okay, and I will extrude um, QMesh, let's say QMesh, this polygroup island, uh, polygroup all, sorry. Okay, like this, you see, I'm able to do this kind of, uh, of edges. And then for that now, I will simply, uh, uh, let me think. Mm. Uh, I will kit bash <laughs> quickly. Uh, Chris, sorry. Um, Sorry, I, I'm just adding my crease. I don't care for the top part. It won't be visible. It will be just uh, merged with everything, but uh, uh, like that. And uh, to kit bash, I don't have a lot of brushes for kit bashing. Let's see what I have with the brush. Uh, let me hide uh, my references. <laughs> Now, uh, the master fluid, uh, this is not a regular alcohol, this is IPA alcohol, which is uh, isopropylic, I don't know exactly what, this is a specific alcohol you use, but um, when you are, uh, just to fill the, 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 the cleaning tank of the form two, um, you put at least six liters of alcohol, a little bit more than six liters of alcohol, three liters and three liters. In fact, it should be even more, four liters and four liters. And I replaced totally one of the tank. Then it was a little bit, it was almost 10 liters of alcohol because this alcohol is used to clean the liquid resin, which hasn't been cured by the laser. Um, but you can, when you have large parts, you have a lot of uh, 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 resin, liquid resin, which is still uh, on top of the model. You need to clean all of that and very quickly it saturates the alcohol. And if it's saturated, then it doesn't clean. That's why you need quite a lot of uh, alcohol. And then you need to pay this alcohol. Um, um, Okay, uh, let me keep bash, like I said. Um, I will switch between, uh, pop, 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 not the stream, uh, see this IMM part, you see I have some screw I can use, it will be easier to use this one than modeling them. Um, let me check. Oh, let me remove, and I want to, Yeah, the problem is I'm in solo mode. You see like this. The only thing is I will be very careful about be sure that uh, all the stuff is fitting um, inside of um, um, just, um, sorry, interacting because for the brand operation, if you are just, um, um, laying, let's say, your model exactly on the surface, it will plan for Boolean operation. That's why you need to have an intersection. Don't forget that. And when you are moving things, don't try to be just on the top of the surface. Try just to just to be inside. Um, okay. Let me do something different there. Same thing a bit inside and I can duplicate let me just undo sorry I want it to a little bit more thickness or thickness in between uh, let me s oops don't forget one thing is uh, you see, I have this model, which is uh, uh, not mask. Everything is mask. And when you are in move scale or rotate mode inside of the brush for R8, and you have an IMM brush, uh, right now this is model which is selected. But if you are just selecting another one, you see it will simply replace one by another, which is great because right now I'm trying to find what could be the shape that I can use uh, to kit bash, like this tube, this one, or this one, or perhaps a regular cylinder. And this is pretty easily and quick to replace. You see, I want, oh, let's keep this one here. You 
say like this, down, and I can continue to, uh, to use multiple models like this one, oops. Like this, I can duplicate. I don't know what all of these are, perhaps not that interesting. I can pick that one. I need to think of the support of my model when I print that and I should have some supports that Uh, of course, you have other brush inside of the brush. This IMM part have quite a lot of, of model, but you have the IMM model kit from Joseph Drost, which is uh, a very, very good for a lot of these parts. Uh, you see, you have a lot of different shapes, flatten one, these panels, and all these kind of things, which is very good. Even simple, regular pipes. Uh, this is very good, and I think I will use most of this part now. Okay, like this. Let me focus on, on, on this front part uh, of the model. Um, let me switch to this kind of pipe. Take this. Let's be sure that I'm going on all the side. I can duplicate it. Don't need to put a lot of um, of part. Let me. Uh, it was a little bit not enough. like this. Uh, I will use this pipe in fact. Uh, I will use it later. Uh, do, 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 do. No, Thomas. And this is another reason why I will try to um, to work with spread model because just this type of model may require more support than I would like to. And I really need to be very careful with all of that. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let me switch to my uh, inserts. Where are you? Let me filter my brushes. Uh, come on, primitives. I'm just trying to build some uh, very quick shapes because, again, I will sculpt most of them uh, later. OK, 
Okay, like this. Let me put other panels uh, very quickly with QQs because this is very convenient. Come on. Yeah, I know I need to rotate it a little bit. Okay, it was for the website. Now let me switch back to the Joseph Drush model kit brush. Um, Don't forget that you need to see that at that size. Let me look at my screen. You see this is way bigger than what is it for the lightsaber. For me this is, yeah. So I'm looking with the right lightsaber right now that I have, okay. You see this is a good scale for me right now then. That's why all these details are not that visible. Uh, Okay, let me do quickly some other stuff because um, I have too much rounded stuff. It's not that rounded, that's a problem. Okay, let me reuse the tube like before. I can duplicate that one, but just to put the tube, let me just select then the tube one. Where are you the tube? Yeah, it was this pipe one, like this. Okay, um, don't know this one, which one are interesting, but I will use another one, but a larger one. Okay, like this, I have three panels to finish. And this one, I did nothing on it, and the other one. So problem with the orientation. Let me try to rotate like this. Okay, I will draw. There is no regular panel. Joseph, what 
<laughs> Why are you doing that to me? <laughs> I want to classic cube panel and uh, because this one have kind of, um, you see this is Vance, then uh, it may be tricky to um, to print. Let me do that on the other side. Okay, like this, because uh, something you need to do is later also I will sculpt some parts um, with the brushes. Um, then uh, I need to avoid doing um, too much specific shapes. Uh, oops, sorry. Insert primitive arrow, insert a cube. Like it was before, move and this one I will simply Q mesh stuff. Ah, which one I inserted? Oh, it was not the quick cube. You see, there is two different cubes. Which one? This is the regular uh, primitive cube from the brush, and this one is a quick cube. And of course, obviously, I want the quick cube if I want to do my modification on it. That's not Chris, Thomas. I want to insert my. Why I can't, I can insert, but not the insert, crazy. Anyway, QMesh, a single polygon. See, trying to snap to the other one. You see, when you're doing Q mesh, move forward and directly try to connect to the other model. I don't want that. That's why I will not use this Q mesh this time, but just a regular extrude, like I said before. You see, I'm able to extrude, and what I want to do is to have this edge being connected. Now, let me slide it. I'm using a lot of slide edge like that. And I can do the same here. I can insert and now I will extrude like I did before this polygon. Not always easy sometimes to see what you are doing. And let me slide it. Uh, I wasn't understanding what what was happening. And then I will be able to, like I did before, to do some sculpting on that later. Uh, let me move that down a little bit. And why not, you see something, I will do the lazy guy, but why not duplicating that? Now 
that but for this one let me do 180 degrees rotation Let's be lazy sometimes. Just need to move this item and I can with control just clicking it will select like this this model. And why not scaling that down? Okay, it will be like this. And I don't really care about if there is some part on top because Boolean operation will clean everything like this. And when I will be on the last part, when I will merge everything and trying to um, to combine as a single model, I will be able to use my brushes just to skirt and giving like if I bring back my references, you see it's kind of a single part melted. I mean, not melted, but you see that it has been molded. It's not separate part. And I will be able to do this transition between all the parts. Um, yeah. <laughs> I won't comment what is in the chat. <laughs> okay, now let's go on the back side of the lightsaber. And what time is it? 11 p.m. Okay, one hour to finish. We should be okay. Okay, now this one. Okay, this is what I have so far. Um, and what I will need to build is this top part here, which is in fact very similar to this one, except that this is the big part, there is not this item, and this one is on top. Then for that, uh, I can reuse it. There is this opening here, which is a kind of Boolean operation. Of course, this big one there, which will be Boolean operation as well. And inside, I will need to do like kit bashing like I did before. Stuff like that shouldn't be very complicated. And I have this mesh also, then I will do Boolean operation as well. Um, and this cable stuff, which should be not that complicated. Okay. Um, oh, you see this one? There is kind of opening stuff. Then this one, let me duplicate on the other side. Then I'll do mirror and weld, but on the Z axis, if I'm not wrong. Mirror and weld Z. And this is done for this side. We just need to do a kind of opening on there. Then let me. Um, not my radial symmetry. Okay. Then I want to have this kind of uh, opening. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, I'm thinking at the same time. You know what? I will do that when I will do this part um, on top because I'm very annoyed about adding that. Then this one, I will duplicate this subtool, Control Shift D, and I will do a mirror on the other side, then on the Z axis, then deformation, mirror, and Z if I'm not wrong. Okay. Then I have this mesh and I think, like I said before, I don't need to have this part inside, but I have this kind of big stuff on top, um, which would be just a regular cube. Then uh, what I do is um, I will clean this extrusion. Oh, I will boolean everything anyway. 
and do I need, do I don't need. Okay, let's do that uh, in a clean way. Why do we have these edges? I don't like that. Um, just trying to clean a little bit. Okay. And I will insert a cube <laughs> on top. Then I'm duplicating that because I need to have, uh, when I'm using this quick cube, it replaces the current sub tool by this quick cube. And of course, I don't want to lose this model. And that's why I'm doing a copy, and this copy will be destroyed. Um, by the quick cube. Okay, I will anyway cut that with the Bolan operation, then I just need to have enough size, a little bit more, I think, a bit wider. I, th I think this is weird that it's just a big thickness. Is it just an extrusion? Do we have a view of that? Yeah, it seems to be a, I don't know. <laughs> um, let me look at my folder with all my images. Yeah, everything just melted together for this one. It was for the Star Wars celebration, and I have no, this is original prop.com, and I have no idea if it's how much is it original. And you see, this one are different. Just one part, the thickness is. Uh, this is so massive, it's very difficult to know. Like this one, you see, it's kind of bended on the side, not that one. See, there is all stuff. I need to add all these details. I can do that with the 3D printing, and it's. I should be stupid. Oh, you see, this is just kind of big part of the mesh. There's this extra stuff. You see, it's not exactly the same. Anyway, uh, let's go back in the brush. Um, Um, Prioritize, yes, please use add polysculpt, it would be easier to catch my attention. Um, the problem is, your question is uh, how many hours uh, till it, it can, I mean, I can do things without tutorials. Uh, it's really up to you. It's uh, if you are a fast learner, which tool you are using. Of course, you, you mentioned Blender, but uh, it's ZBrush, Blender, and ZBrush are different. Um, as you can see, a lot of things I'm doing, I'm always doing the same thing, in fact, uh, not that a lot of different tools. And after when using my brushes, I'm using always the same brushes. And um, I'm not using a lot of very advanced techniques. Then it's it's really up to you. It's, it's very difficult, and especially in hours. I, I learned very quickly software, to be honest. Um, but I'm very bad about learning Japanese, <laughs> to be honest. My Japanese uh, teacher uh, has a very hard time with me. Um, yeah, it's, it's really deep, and it's difficult to answer your question. Really difficult. Um, okay, then this one, I will Qmesh, uh, Qmesh, sorry. Um, apply dynamic subdivision on it but uh, yeah this q grid but with a different coverage and that and i think i will put this cylinder just b 
below, like I saw on the other model. Sub tool. And which one is it? This one. Okay, it's negative one. Let me mm, insert this cylinder. Why this one? Um, okay. It's too large. Okay, and I'll bevel slightly. that this if it's smooth it's nicer okay um then top part like i said before okay um i need to do this part and there is you see this kind of part here which is on top like this addition just below i just noticed that now and in fact i Oh, this is weird. I have a very hard time to know what is it inside. It seems to be cut on top. This one seems to be... Oh, I don't know. This one is outside, inside. Very difficult to know. Um, yes, Modern Kenai is right. If you want to learn, it's very important to be consistent and not lazy. <laughs> um, yeah, this is very vague. Yeah, yeah. It's a broad, broad question. Um, it's, I mean, you have two things when you are learning 3D. You have the uh, artistic aspect and the technical aspect. Um, techniques are something, if you are used about 3D software, whatever software, or even Photoshop, other software, you are used about computer stuff, of course, it will be easier. And after, you need to grasp whatever the software, the philosophy of the software, the way that it has been designed at the foundation. Um, when you start to understand that, it's like learning bicycle. bicycle. Um, at the beginning, you need to have the small wheels to help you avoid falling, and then you can remove one. And um, and the day that you know how to 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 to, uh, to 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 master the bicycle by itself, just at the minimum, meaning just having no help just to go straight. Um, okay, you know how to, 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 to do bicycle and you will never forget that. After the software, okay, if you, you have the basics, the foundation, you still keep that in mind. After it's practice, you can do some bicycle, but being a good, uh, 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 um, uh, I don't say that, uh, I mean, if you want to be very good with bicycle, like a, uh, uh, um, uh, like a wheeling or, or, or a lot of this kind of stuff or just uh, uh, not using your hands, stuff like that. It's a lot of practice and falling and mistakes, but you still know how to do bicycle. And for software, if I give another example, I've been using 3D Studio Max for years. I mean, really years. I was an instructor for advanced modeling, advanced animation. And it's been something like now 10 years <laughs> that I stopped using 3D Studio Max. And each time I'm going in 3D Studio Max, I'm lost at the beginning. But very quickly, it's go back. Of course, I'm very far to be how good I was before because I really lost a lot of things, but it's still somewhere in my mind. And if I had to spend, I don't know, something like three or four days in max, I think I will be able to catch uh, uh, back all my knowledge, uh, at least about what it was at that time. Of course, all the new features, it's something different. But since I know the philosophy of 3D Studio Max, at least somewhere in my mind, I should be able to catch up. And then the more 3D software you know, the more easier you catch the software. An example, um, I'm learning, It's sorry, I'm late on that, but I'm learning Marvelous Designer a little bit. Um, just opening the software, I'm able to understand some stuff because I'm used about 3D software. Then um, it's really up to you. Um, but something which is, uh, <laughs> no, I'm definitely not an Autodesk spy. <laughs> um, 
something which is very important. Now you are lucky because you have so many tutorials online, forums, uh, free, free training, paid training, so many things that there is no reason and no excuses about not being able to learn something. After being good, of course, this is practice and this is, of course, skills. But it's just a matter of, of course, like Mother Kenner was saying, not being lazy. Well, sometimes you are lazy. <laughs> I mean, you are, and I'm lazy myself sometimes. Okay, let's just do this kind of split like that. I don't know who it is, and I do some boolean operations. Um, I will... Um, mm, 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 mm. Let me go back to my quick cube, because something goes wrong, is not wrong. Um, initialize, quick cube, and I will do a three by three, three by one by one. Like this. And you know, I'm uh, I'm very old school. I started 3D in 1996, really as a professional. Uh, I spent quite some time at, at, at a, a time where 3D modeling was way not, I mean, so much difficult with so very uh, very tools uh, just right now i have 24 polygons it's fine but I i'm just copying that and uh sub tool uh, copy and then go back to my model and i have 360,000 polygons which is for zbrush nothing but at that time oh my god <laughs> and when you have a model like i did for my figurines with uh, 140 or 50 millions of polygons come on <laughs> um Okay, let me pass that. Where are you? Past, past, past. Where are you? Okay, here. And I'm far to be the best artist in the world. When I see a lot of streamers, I mean, I have a lot of technical knowledge, but on the artistic side, uh, Pierre Olivier Lévesque was just before me for the stream. I mean, he's doing some crazy stuff. That's just crazy. Um, anyway, uh, I'm talking, I'm not talking, but I'm not really moving forward. I mean, not progressing for my model. Okay, then I have that and I want to do this kind of, of uh, opening and I'm doing the boolean like before. This and if I move down, should be able to do that. Let's rotate slightly. I have no idea at all if it's like that or not. And you see, let me just move up like that. Uh, I think this one is too big. But I need to um, move that one. Let me QMesh this polygroup island. But like this, it was too much. Okay, like this. And as you notice, I have this model which is just cut by the brown operation. This is just a matter of order because I guess this tube should be perhaps this one. No. No. Oh. Where are you? Okay, because it's sliced by this one. Then perhaps I need to do just a separate group with this one, like this, and using the one below. And I need to think about that. So it's just the order of things. And in fact, this one should be just sliced before this tube here. Then I may not just do the start group like I did, 
but moving that up in the hierarchy. And perhaps it should be the first item that I need to use. And that, and where are you? It's always a matter of order. And sometimes just need to do your brain operation in, um, you see, not that one. Why I don't get, ah, oh, shit, sorry. My mistake. And why this one is not visible? Ah, because this is slide by the other. You see, it's just a matter of uh, that this one shouldn't be on so much on top. You see, I have all these other items. And you know what I will do? I will do another start groups like this. And let now mirror and weld, and later I will do my boolean operation by mixing everything. Mirror and weld, no, ah, I'm on the other side. Um, whoop, where are you? Deformation, mirror, and now I can do my mirror and weld. Mirror and weld need to be always, I don't see the grid right now because this is hidden, but you see there is a floor and you have this red axis, ax, and you have the blue one and the green which is on top. And when you do this mirror and well, which is doing a copy and mirroring this copy and welding everything together, the model that you want to mirror on the other side must be on the positive axis, always on the side of this positive axis. On the other side, you say, oh, there is nothing, then nothing to weld. That's why I add this error message. Now, because I mirror on the other side, I'm able, not in sub tool, sorry, uh, go back in geometry and doing my mirror and weld and I have that on the other side. Uh, I can enable my symmetry and not too mesh, sorry. So I'm able in real time just to modify my model like this. Yes, I don't like that, but uh, I can deal with it. See, that's why I really love Booleans, because I'm able to do this kind of stuff like this in real time. Okay, um, my small opening here, then to do that, uh, this tube which are just sliced by this stuff, I will just duplicate one of them and use that on, on the side. Um, where are you? Which one I will be able to use? Not this one, let me use that one. I can duplicate it and this one let's hide it and doing a delete hidden geometry delete hidden i can center to my selection and this is probably like that I don't know how far it is from the other split. See what we see here is this extrusion there. Okay, sub tool, this one also is negative as well. We will be able to make that a bit more rounded later, anyway. Okay, then, uh, I don't know what it is here, uh, if it's part of the electronic or not. And I will do now the opening there, and this slice here. Um, let me think. Okay. I will... Um, duplicate this model. I'll just do a kind of temporary mesh because I want to slice everything. And I will work on a copy of that one. Let me duplicate. And I will just solo it, just to work on this one. Uh, geometry, um, I will apply this dynamic subdivision, delete lower. And it should be okay. And now with my pen, once in a while. Um, uh, 
I will mask without the symmetry and I'll do something different. I will do a dynamesh because by doing a dynamesh, I will have enough resolution. Uh, let me remove the solo mode because I have this slice. Sorry, the two models are on top of each other. Trying to see the proportions of my uh, opening. Do we have a view where I see that on the side? See, this one is going almost on top. And you see this shape like that? I didn't notice it was going up. You see, here are going up, down, up, down. I need to fix that. Meaning that it should go up there. And shit, I didn't anticipate that. Anyway, um, <laughs> Like I said, I'm trying to see a view where, okay, it's going until to this level. See, there is kind of grid and stuff like that. I should be able to redo that. See, I can use Joseph Drust stuff for that. <laughs> and, and you see, we see this shape here, which is here. You see, that's the same. This one, everything is medley. This one has been done separately. I guess this one quality is better than this one, I guess. Okay, uh, then I have this mesh and I can do a mesh extract. This is the ID behind. See, I have this mesh extract like that. And oops, what is that? Let me accept to see what is. Uh -huh. Why I have that? Let me solo. Ah, because you see I have my thickness and it took the other side and doing the thickness on the other side as well. Um, let me think that I need to move that down if I want to keep the thickness and being able to, to be able to insert all the electronics just below. Um, okay, then for my mask, if I want to remove my mask on this area, I need to go in my brush palette. Let me remove my, my references. Um, you have the auto masking and auto masking. I want a back face masking. But if you click now with back face masking, masking, this is a clay builder brush, which is selected, which will have the back face masking. Uh, if you want to apply that with the mask, you need to press the control key to have your current mask pen brush selected on the top right of the, on my screen. And then now this is this brush, which has the back face masking applied. Then I can press control and with Alt key, I can now remove the mask without affecting the other side of my model. You see my other side is clean. Let me just take care of that. If I do extract now, go to solo mode, you see my extract seems to be okay now. Yep. Then I can accept this extract. I can remove the mask on it. This one, oops, sorry. Where are you? This one is useless. I can delete it. I can go back on that one, which was then this temporary model, which was just for the brand operation. I can delete it as well. And I can say this one will be then negative. And you see, I'm able to cut through this model. And this is where it's important. Let me uh, uh, look at that one alone. Solo, you see, yeah, this cap, then I need to move that one just to the bottom. Then with my Zimola brush, I can select all of these polygons. 
and I can Q mesh but just to the bottom like this. Now if I remove my solo mode, my polyframe, you see. And what you see here is this cylinder I added on top. And I will be able to perhaps keep that and putting the electronic on top as my reference. And even this part, if you want to have something which is more clean than what was, uh, uh, I mean, if you look at the reference images, uh, it seems to have been just cut in a clean way and perhaps polished by the time a little bit. And probably I think it was perhaps a, a lightsaber which just slightly scratch, uh, um, uh, I mean, this lightsaber. Then let's, you see it's too much irregular. Then what I can do, I can go to this model there. And in my deformations, I can use this polish by groups features, which should polish, you see slightly. Uh, let me just use the other algorithm, which is stronger. And you see now that we see that the polish like that apply to the model. Okay. Uh, I want to apply something on top on this one. And subtool this one, where are you? This is another model. I need to consider that. This one, you see this is two model. Then I can duplicate this one and moving to the top, being a Boolean on that one. And you see I have too much thickness, but for now I don't really care. And using my move brush, I'm able to like that. So I can just modify slightly. Or if I want to go back to this one, because I think it should be more on top like this. You see, that's why this is great to modify in real time what you want to do like this one. Okay, I need to modify inside. Okay. And of course, after I will be able to alter all of that. Um, okay, now before moving forward, uh, I will save that. Okay, let me look at chat. Uh, sorry for your nickname. Uh, I'm from France, I'm French. Mother can I already asked that to the team. <laughs> uh, okay, 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 okay. Well, can I, a lot of subtool because this is a lot of temporary meshes. Um, yeah, I know I'm going a lot of up and down, but uh, uh, I prefer as much as possible keeping my um, my subtool list. Uh, I mean, my original model as much as possible. And quickly, I'm will build, especially with boolean operation at the end, different parts, and I will build them in another another tool with all these subtools, and then I will refine and, and reduce as much as possible the number of subtools. But for now, I'm a, I, I won't be able to, I want to, to be able to duplicate so part. You see that this one, I could have been able to, uh, to um, earlier to do my Boolean operation just to having these holes and opening. But by doing, not doing that, I was able just to, to reuse one of these to do this cut there. Then that's why this is very important. And also I noticed, like I said before, like for this model, here, this one, that it should go up like this. You remember this uh, uh, reference image should go up like that, and not mine doesn't go up like that. And now, since I have few polygons, I'm able to do this addition 
to the model. Then let me remove my boolean. Let me switch to solo mode. And I don't know where this cut is going. It's going up like this. I know exactly where it's going. It's not that big. Then perhaps I'm able to insert. Sorry, I'm thinking at the same time. Um, not my topology brush, my Zimola brush. Then I want to do this kind of going up like this. Then if I insert like that, I don't have any kind of issue. And um, my question is what I do. Do I move my edges? Let me show you that. Like this, and then moving in. But you see, it's not that visible. Or do I insert? And I don't like to insert edge loops because it will just break the boundary. Hmm. Sorry, I'm <laughs> thinking. Uh, no, single. I think I will go that way. Chris. Um, Why do I have this edge going crazy like this? Uh, let me slide this point. Oh, it's not symmetrical. Yes, it is. Why, why, why? Okay, let's do another way. Uh, oh, shit, I know. <laughs> Okay, better that way. And of course, I need to fix that on top. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm creating edge loops. Shit. That's why I had weird results. Sorry. Sometimes you're doing mistakes, doing something wrong, but noticing. I'm sorry. Okay. And I goes after shits. Okay, fixed. I think it's not that, not that far. Yes, it's very close. Ah, sh <laughs> sorry, I'm saying a lot of shit. <laughs>
And on the other side, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's not that thick. And I think this one is going too far on the side. Then no problems. Perhaps, in fact, I won't fix that. But perhaps this edge should be more perhaps just in the middle here. Perhaps you see this area is too far on here. Perhaps it should be more on the center like that. And it will be difficult to fix with my model because it's less and less rounded. I don't like that at all. You know what? It will remain like that. <laughs> Okay, then uh, this electronic inside. Uh, thank you, Modakaner, to, to share the info. I don't see what you mean, Modakaner, about uh, moves can rotate for the gizmo. Uh, Marius, um, Dr. Wall, um, what, which is uh, harder, organic or hard surfaces? It really depends what you mean by techniques or artistic skills. Um, hard surfaces, let's say you have less unknown, but you need to have more, let's say, technical knowledge from my point of view. Um, while organic is more freedom, more brushes, more natural. On my side, I prefer way more doing organic than hard surfaces. And for, for me, doing these lightsabers and helmet before was a way for me to practice hard surfaces and working, doing something different, going outside of my zone of comfort. Um, but I mean, there is parts which are more difficult in one technique, but other are more difficult for the other technique. But I mean, there is stuff which are difficult for organics, while other are more difficult for hard surfaces. An example organic, this is very easy to build the volume, the mass, the silhouette, of course, without considering the artistic aspect. But what takes time and what is difficult is all the fine details. Are you using, are you sculpting the patterns? Are you using an alpha? Are you using more the surface noise with some UV stuff and then uh, tillable textures? Um, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of things to consider. Uh... Durigi, c'est possible, on a déjà vu sur un tutoriel, effectivement, je suis français. Um, uh, a good question that I see, uh, this is, sorry, marketing guy who is speaking now. Uh, would learning ZBrush to be too hard, unnatural to pick up ZBrush as a starting program? If you mean about starting 3D, in fact, it's way more easier to start with ZBrush than other software, meaning, it's not that ZBrush is easier than, let's say, 3D Studio Max or, or, or whatever the software. What I mean is ZBrush is, of course, a 3D software, but the philosophy behind is closer to a 2D software. And a lot of people who never never did 3D before have a better uh, understanding of ZBrush and understand, I mean, are able to use it way more faster than someone who has been used about 3D software for years and trying to adapt the way that you are thinking to ZBrush. Um, if, since I'm in Star Wars, the first thing you need to understand about ZBrush if you are coming from 3D is what Yoda was saying. Um, was uh, unlearn what you learned. Oh, it was something like that. You need to unlearn. Uh, it was what he was saying to Luke Skywalker when uh, uh, he was training him uh, to, to the Force and being a Jedi. That yes, you need to unlearn what you already learned, and this is very important. Don't try to think the same way as what you can do in 3D Studio Max or Maya or Blender or Modo inside of the brush. The only thing which is very common is in fact the Z modeler, and even the Z modeler, it's not the same way of working. Sorry. Um, 
No, Mordor Kenner, when you are in the gizmo mode, moves can rotate, there is no difference. It's only for the transport where there is a difference. If you are in gizmo mode, whatever the mode moves can rotate, there is no impact on the gizmo by itself. Um, okay, I need to, to speed up because I want to finish this stuff and I have only have 15, 30 minutes, no more. Um, then this electronic stuff. Uh, let me work on this model, which should be good enough for that. Uh, okay, uh, where are you, my Z model brush? Sorry, I'm just moving some edges. It's to have the boundaries of the visible part of my model. Because I don't want to do some kit bashing on part which won't be visible. And I know it will be then that way on the side. And uh, like before, I will use my brush. Let me just put that on the side. Um, my, 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 my model kit brush from Joseph. And this is where comes this van stuff, which is. I don't have one. This one would be better. See, this is where I need to be very careful about this kind of stuff, which is going on the side, because I need to uh, adapt my model uh, to be uh, just fitting my object. Well. It's not very big deal if it's inside. What I can do is I can move this polygon like this slightly. Uh, I don't have a very nice view on these references. Sorry, let me just go back there. Yeah, it's just <laughs> cheat stuff. <laughs> um, this is not exactly the same. Kind of flat stuff, rounded stuff, and uh, it's not, not the same at all. You see this one, this is on the other side. I don't know which one need to be trusted. Uh, perhaps this is the same on both sides. Okay, you know what, let's do the same on the other side, but more of course below. Um, Not the rotation, I want to move it in. I think I rotated that a little bit. I doing something wrong.
take care of my edges like that, like I said before. Could be a problem for the brain operation. Like this, I will do this. Uh, you don't see that in the references, but references, but there is part of this model which is rounded and stuff there. And then uh, let's try that. Uh, hello, Polyfusion. It's been a while. Uh, my, uh, where are you, my model kit brush? There is no cylinder, I think. Yeah, let's use that one. Oh, hold on. The cat wanted to be with me. Nico. Yeah, name, my cat's name is Neko, which means cat in Japanese. <laughs> Hello. Eh bien. Non, peut venir. Allez, viens. Yeah, this is my cat. <laughs> Hey, viens derrière. Non, tu veux pas? Bon, so the time my cat is going in on my back behind me, then I'm just on the edge of the chair, <laughs> which is annoying. Hein? Ouais, Nico. Yeah, yeah. The door was closed and she wasn't able to go to go in. And now I have my cat between the cintiq, <laughs> just in between. Uh, okay. No, she won't stay. Okay, uh, let me insert now my cubes. I see nothing on these references, it's a pain. Sorry, I don't talk a lot. Obviously, I will add a lot of details on that later by just scripting them, like I said before. Um, a lot of rounded part, but not that squarish part.
Don't forget that when you are inserting, you can use the space bar to move your model, but it's always on the screen working plane. And it doesn't work for everything. I reuse my tubes from Joseph. Oh, this one is not a line like it should be. Why I can't mask this one? Let me go back to Joseph brush and where are the tubes, the pipes, like this one, which was working fine. I wanted to do more today, but as you can see, um, see quite a lot of things to do. Um, what time is it? Yeah, almost midnight my time. Okay, um, then what I'll do is, let me bring back the references. I will do this, uh, this two tube that I need to add. Uh, I'll do the same thing like I just did now. In fact, I'll use the pipe one. Uh, perhaps this one is better. I think this one is just a regular tube one. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, rotate. Because I don't know yet, perhaps, you know what? I will use the regular. Um, uh, regular uh, cables to do that, not use 3D printing. It Obviously, it would be uh, better to do that that way. Um, the only thing is for this tube like that, I want to build uh, this shape and using Boolean operation uh, just to have a cylinder and go through because I will use, of course, real cable to do that, uh, electric cables, and I just need to take care of the diameter, which will be something like 2.5 millimeters, uh, uh, something like that. But I just want to be sure because I will need to go through um, when I will attach uh, uh, all of them. Um, then let's keep that the way it is right now. Perhaps I will add more stuff uh, or later inside, but at least you know the, uh, the thing. Then let me just build that. Uh, I will start with a quick cube. As usual, <laughs> initialize uh, a two by two, and uh, um, let me think. It's more like that. So, uh, a small bevel uh, there, 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 like this. Now I can apply geometry, my dynamic subdivision, not the smooth one, but the 
quick with one and playing with the coverage like this and this vertex and this vertex should be more inside well let's do everything Okay, it's longer and something which is important um, that I will need to um, uh, to glue them on my model and I want to be sure with a good location then what I will do is um, I will insert just to show you with my similar brush on the vertex like that I can split like this as a small hole then I can Q-mesh my model and as you can see I have already creased edges and it's not perfectly rounded I don't care because what I want is exactly in fact just want to, to plug and be aligned with what I will do then I can use that as my model uh, um, just to be subtracted uh, as uh, a shape and in fact I will do in fact something even different is I will first, first Q-mesh everything like this because I want to have more a uh, uh, flat base in this in fact which is quite like that sorry I'm just thinking of something let me be well okay sorry <laughs> like this and I just need to have my crease and I can do my edge loop okay then I have my shape and what I will do for that is um, I will keep that up uh, I don't know what I will do I and for the problem is I don't have the cable just to, to know the distance right now um, which is for me annoying then let me just copy that see tool copy go back to my uh, sub tool list and on that one let me pass it just below which is way too big uh, like this because it's not that small And of course, this is more on the side, like this, being aligned to the surface, normal surface of the model. And what I will add is, you see, I will need perhaps to round a little bit this model, but. I don't care because when I will do my bullet operation, you see what I will do is, you see this model there. Uh, let me change a little bit the dynamic subdivision. But I won't use a Q grid, but let me use a smoothing. You see, I think it will be better that way. And we need, in fact, to just to move slightly to, to be rounded because whatever the position, wherever will be this item, it will, be to, it will need to be rounded uh, like the other one. I just need to remove this crease edge. But anyway, um, let me append a cylinder. Uh, append, which is, of course, too big as well. Oh, you know what? Uh, let's do that with the Z-sphere. With a Z-sphere, sorry. Delete. I'll do the cable with uh, just a Z-sphere, just to have an idea about where it will be exactly located. Um, then, uh, let me think that just below, at the end, uh, I will insert 
buzzy sphere like this that I'll be able to move it, scale it. The idea will be to have, of course, a consistent thickness. Something like this, I would say. And then, when you are doing your, these spheres, don't forget that if you press the Shift key when you are drawing your this sphere, it will keep exactly the same size. Don't don't take care of this kind of artifact uh, stuff. This is mainly uh, because of the Boolean like Boolean mode. You see, I'm pressing the Shift key each time I'm drawing a new one, like that. I will always keep my this sphere a uh, uh, good one and now I will move it just down my lightsaber until this stage this position on the side I guess it's bigger but well because if I do that, I'm able to draw and insert on regular location like this my Z spheres, but I'm sure to keep the same thickness, the same diameter everywhere. Oops. See all along, it's inside of one of these uh, uh, part like that. That's why these here are very convenient because you can keep stuff on the same radius. Just need to know that if you are using this control key when you are a uh, shift key, sorry, when you are inserting, you keep this diameter all along. And now I know that I can move this one okay then I will do some quick uh, uh, duplicate uh, I won't spend a lot of time on that because it's already late obviously um, but at least it gives you an idea of what it will be. You see, it needs to fit in in between. Then uh, mine is not at the good size. But this is what I will need to to scale uh, and check the good size uh, later.
you see we start to have something which looks okay then I will just finish sorry this is late but um, uh, I will just do this part and except this one that I will do offline so this is just a kind of cube and some uh, uh, inserts it's not a big deal uh, in fact I even reuse this one by doing a mirror and well on the other side anyway um, for this one I need to remove that one but since I think this is an error mesh or not anymore error mesh yeah this is an error mesh and I can't really use it unfortunately but I removed that after I've just uh, uh, just making the uh, array mesh like I just did now. I can remove that one and now okay then if I invert okay done I can do a delete delete sorry hidden so this is my French accent sometimes this is very strong <laughs> and geometry modify topology delete hidden and then for that one in fact there is just a support under this mesh where you have the screw which are applied which is just a regular cube and again and again and again uh, let me uh, insert Let's say cylinder 3D, I don't care about this cylinder 3D, but I convert that to a regular quick cube mesh. And this model go from that to probably a little bit more. It goes just sorry, I'm just trying to find the good thickness. And this and on top of that geometry, dynamic subdivision, and I will use not to smooth oh, sorry but to grid one the problem is you see this one seems to be more on top of the other but doesn't seem to be that the depth it should be seems to be really on top of the other that's why I don't really see why it should be that big and perhaps just moving down that and I will duplicate this model just to do this shape Then let me duplicate moving on top like this changing the thickness and to do this kind of cut I will again duplicate this one <laughs> let me change depth Yes. You just go through and use that as a negative sub tool, not a remesh to us. Okay, and what I'll do is to do this angle there, I will just add simply, uh, simply. So this is really French stuff. Let me slide this edge. Sorry, slide this edge loop complete. And that trying to find the good location. Yeah, like this. This edge in between, this one, I don't need it. Then insert, I will, come on remove that one and this one I will slide it now let me solo I need to look something uh, I want to remove that one as well and this one just to give the angle and then doing a rotation I'll slide it or just the edge uh, just the edge 
and then I'm able now to rotate. this of course I need to avoid <laughs> slicing everything uh, just below where are you okay let me move that Tomorrow, this is wrong. In fact, you want to move that, you want to slice before this one. Sorry, okay, like this. And obviously, I want to slice this one. Okay, and okay, what did I do? Okay. Sorry, I have some parts. I don't know why I'm doing wrong. This is this one? Yes. Shit. <laughs> um, you know what? I need to do this part separately. Oh, it will be a problem. And after I will merge everything. Then this is a new part. Okay, like this. Um, yeah, so this is this thickness just below, and let me just increase that one. Sorry. Uh, and uh, same as below, I want to do a small cylinder there. Let me reuse one of them I did before. Where are you? Like this one. Duplicate. Okay, like this. Oops. Okay. Uh just to avoid stuff with 3D printing, I will avoid this kind of full hole. Let me just be like that. Okay, and what I wanted to do is to have something more rounded on this area. Then for this mesh here, the negative one, I will insert an edge loop. I will move slightly up. I'm not searching and I'm not looking for something perfectly rounded for that, but at least which looks like it's rounded. Okay, I yeah, have this kind of uh, stuff. I, I will just doing this deformation later when I do the burn operation. I just want to add to that one. Um, some, just a little bit of extrusion. Uh, let me add another edge loop there. See like this, and then I can slide uh, slide. Where are you? Vertex. No, I want to slide, not to split some. Um. 
And now let's add, since Joseph did a lot of nice screws, I can use them. Then my model kit brush, and I'm sure I won't find the one I want to use. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, Joseph. <laughs> Not a regular one, no. Okay, I think I will do some uh, more head screw uh, soon. I don't have them here. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Ah, I'm doing the boolean on it. That's why there is we don't see it. And another thing is, you see, this um, this item. Let me just split that as a separate sub tool. Then I do a split unmask it point. Then it's now a separate sub tool. Then I can use it not as a start group, but. Uh, Real model and just below the negative cylinder to do the opening, and I can run it back. Okay, and then same below, let me duplicate here, and the cylinder here, let me duplicate as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, I miss a lot of things in the chat. Um, Uh, model canner, yes, we could add more, but again, uh, having more and more uh, functionality for the gizmo. I mean, the idea of the gizmo was to keep something which was seem more easier to use, of course, than uh, transpose. Transpose can be great for a lot of things, but just for basic manipulation, the gizmo is way better anyway. Uh, but the gizmo already have all of this functionality already, which adds some, I mean, a lot of power, but sometimes some complexity if you know how to use them, of course. Um, that's way better. But if we start to do some different behavior, like, okay, you are in scale mode, and then in scale, you have perhaps uniform scaling, which appears and stuff like that. You know, it's very difficult when you are doing development of a software that it's not because this is something which will be convenient for you that it will be convenient for everybody else. We need to find a good balance. And trust me, this is very difficult. Um, okay. Um, okay. Okay, then I will stop here for today. Um, of course, it needs a little bit more love on small details. And uh, what I will do offline, um, will be to uh, just refine some parts, which may be uh, annoying like this one. I don't like that stuff. This is really weird. Uh, trying to do the connection, um, refining all of these parts as a separate part. I wanted really to start the 3D printing process next week, but um, obviously I need to to think about splitting and I need to, I hope I will receive all the parts just to have the measurement because I really need to anticipate uh, uh, all the parts inside the electronics. Uh, to be honest, when I see the size of that, I don't see a reason why it shouldn't work. My only concern is more for the batteries because I need to put four batteries, uh, AA batteries, um, inside of that. And I guess it should be better on the top part. But because of the opening, I don't think so. Then I need really to think about a way to make everything fitting that. And it's not that sm it's big, but. Uh, I see, and where I will put this speaker. That's um, that's my concern. Anyway, no more questions today. Sorry, I need to stop because the next stream will start in 30 minutes. Um, 
who is after me. I think this is, yeah, uh, Tommy Lonards, who is just, will follow the, uh, me, and then um, it's still mine, <laughs> definitely. Um, yes, then, like I said, I will polish that um, during this next week. And next week, I really hope to finish more the sculpting, meaning that I'll try to build all the parts and then I will process with you some bone preparation, not all of them, just few of them to show you the process, uh, to understand all of that. And then uh, spending something like one hour just to sculpt some parts and making that, like I said, more real and less uh, uh, um, mathematic, mathematical shapes. Um, and uh, then we'll start the 3D printing process um, uh, to put all the parts. And I will try to spend a bit of time in preform uh, to, uh, speak about the orientation and uh, and thing like that okay anyway then thank you very much for spending to to be with me for this one hour uh, three hours and a half um like i said see you next week and stay tuned for the next presentation in 30 minutes with tony leonards thank you very much bye bye see you soon